Lesson 14.2, Task 1, Recursive Formulas for Geometric Sequences. Explore recursive formulas for geometric sequences. In the last lesson, you learned how to write recursive formulas for an arithmetic sequence. With an arithmetic sequence, the recursive formula expresses the fact that you always add the same number to each term in order to obtain the next term. With a geometric sequence, however, you multiply each term by the same number to obtain the next term. You can use this fact to create a recursive formula for a geometric sequence. All right, so the big difference, arithmetic sequence, you add or subtract a common difference to the next term. A geometric, you multiply by the, a common ratio to get to the next term. All right, so use this recursive formula for a sequence. A of 1 equals 3. Remember, A of 1 is your first term. So your first term equals 3. And A of n equals 2 times A times n minus 1. So 2 is going to be your common ratio. So 2 times your previous term, basically. All right, so how could you explain in words how to find a term of the sequence using one or more of the preceding terms? Add 3 to the preceding term. No, 3, again, was your first term. And this one says multiply the preceding term of the sequence by 2 to find the next term. A of n equals 2 times your previous term. So this one looks like the right one. Add the two previous terms together. No, that one would not work. All right, B part says enter the term numbers 1 through 10 in column A. So you can see they've done that. Okay. In cell B2, enter the first term of the sequence. So remember, A of 1 was 3. And then to find the next term, you're going to do 2 times the previous term. So B2 represents the previous term. So 2 times 3 would be 6, would be this one here. Then we would do 2 times B3. 2 times B4, etc. Okay, so it says in cell B3, enter the formula 2 times B2 for finding the second term. Fill down the formula from B2 to B11 in order to find the first 10 terms of the sequence. All right, so the sequence is geometric because you're multiplying because consecutive terms have a common ratio of, and if you go up here and look, you can see it's two times the previous term. So your common ratio would be two. And it says, what is an explicit formula for the sequence? So an explicit formula for the sequence would be A of N equals three times 2 to the n minus 1. So it's always going to be um, your first term times your common ratio raised to the n minus 1. This would be your explicit formula for this example here. All right, it says use the explicit formula to write a formula in cell C2 of the spreadsheet for calculating the first term of the sequence. The formula in C2 should use the term number in cell A2 Fill down the formula from C2 to C11 to find the first 10 terms of the sequence. All right, so they're talking about this chart up here. So you could use what we just determined as that explicit formula, 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. But instead of n, you could replace that with the numbers over here that were going from terms 1 through 10. And that would be your explicit formula. So, for example, the first one would be 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. In this row, n is 1, so 1 minus 1 would be 0. So, it would be 3 times 2 raised to the 0 power. And then you would do that for each one. Just use the formula to fill in the table. All right, what do you notice about the terms you found in column C using the explicit formula and the terms you found in column B using the recursive formulas? Well, it doesn't matter whether you use the explicit or recursive. The terms in each row should always be the same. 
All right, so they're going to be the same because it's two formulas that's going to produce the same thing. It's just usually they're given different information. All right, so in general, what is the recursive equation for a geometric sequence with a common ratio R? All right, so it's going to be A of N equals R times A to the N minus 1. So you're going to have this formula here would be your recursive formula. All right, so it says, what is the 20th term of the sequence? Okay, so let's um, use our formula here and look and see. I'm going to use the explicit formula. And the explicit formula is 3 times 2. And then it's raised to the n minus 1. So the n minus 1, in this case, it says find the 20th term. So n would be 20. 20 minus 1 is 19. All right, and I hit enter. And that's going to give me a very large number here. So let's go ahead and enter that in here. So 1, 5, 7, 2, 8, 6, 4. All right, so all we did was use the formula a of n equals 3 times 2 raised to the n minus 1. So we use the explicit formula right here, and all we did was substitute to find the 20th term. We substituted 20 in for here, so 20 minus 1 is 19. That's why in the calculator I plugged in a 19. So 3 times 2 to the 19th power is just using this explicit formula given. All right, so it says, which formula did you use? Well, we just talked about that. We used the explicit formula. And why? Because it's simple to just plug in any term and find the answer. All right, that's all for task one. If you have any questions, let me know. Lesson 14.2, task two. Write a recursive formula for a geometric sequence. A recursive equation for a geometric sequence with common ratio R is A of N equals R times A in parentheses N minus 1 in function notation or A sub N equals R times A sub N minus 1 is in subscript notation. You can write a recursive formula for a geometric sequence given a graph, a table, or two terms. Write a recursive formula for the sequence whose graph is shown. All right, so if we look at the y values, we can see that it goes from 32 to 16 to 4 to 2. So our first term, 1, 2, 3, 4, just is the number of terms. So the y value is going to tell us what's happening with this sequence. So the term of the sequence are the y coordinates of the point. So 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2. Find the ratio of consecutive terms. All right, so we're just going to take the second one and divide it by the first one, take the third one, divide it by the second one, the fourth one, divided by the third, and so on. You can see that these all have an equal common ratio of one half. All right, so there's a common ratio of one half, so the sequence is geometric. So if you have to multiply by a common uh, ratio, then you know it's going to be geometric. So using subscript notation, you can write a recursive formula for the sequence as a sub 1 equals 32. Remember, a sub 1 or a of 1 is always your first term. So we can see that our first term here is 32. And then a sub n, this is our general formula. a sub n equals 1 half, which is our common ratio times a to the n minus 1. All right, so how can you tell from the graph that the sequence is not arithmetic? All right, with its arithmetic, it's going to make a line. So the points do not make a line, so we know it's not arithmetic. It would be geometric. How can you write the recursive formula in function notation? All right, so we know we have to have our first term. Our first term was 32. 
and then a of n equals one half times a to the n minus one. This is the only one. So this one has a first term of two, so it has to be this one, and we know that the common ratio is one half, not two. So that's the only one that it could be. All right, that's all for task two. If you have any questions, let me know. Lesson 14.2, task three. Write recursive formulas for geometric sequences. Write a recursive formula for the sequence shown in the table. So in the table, you can see that we're gonna have the first six terms, and then a sub n is gonna tell us what our terms are. So the first term is two, second term is six, third term is 18. So if you do six divided by three, or sorry, six divided by two is three, 18 divided by six is three, 54 divided by 18 is three, and so on. So you can see, to find your common ratio, all you have to do is divide, and when each one of those is three, that means our common ratio for this sequence is three. We have a common ratio. We multiply to get to the next term, which means it's geometric. Using function notation, you can write a recursive formula for the sequence as a of one, so your first term, we can see up here, our first term is two, and then a sub n, this is our general formula, a sub n equals three, that's our common ratio, times the previous term. So how can you use the recursive formula to find the seventh term? All right, so we're gonna substitute seven for n. Okay, we're gonna substitute seven for n right here. And so a of n equals three times your previous term, then simplify for a of seven. So we need to do three times seven minus one, which is six. So our sixth term is 486. So we're gonna do three times 486, three times 486, and we get 1458. So 1458 would be the next term. All right, how can you write the recursive formula in subscript notation? So it'd be a sub one equals two, that's our first term, a sub one equals two, and then a sub n equals three times a to the n minus one. So remember function notation and subscript notation are very similar. It's just two different ways to write the same thing. All right, that's all for task three. If you have any questions, let me know.